Hey, it's me, Bobby Delidri, and welcome to my Let's Play of Kenora, Door to Phantom Isle. As you can see here, I got the collection, uh, Kenora Fantasy, uh, not gonna pronounce the rest of that word, especially that one that starts with an R, because Kenora is already a difficult, uh, word to pronounce, especially with my speech impediment, so give me a break. But, the first time I heard about, uh, Kenora, is back in 2009 when they announced they're going to make a remake for the Nintendo Wii. I was interested because I like 2D platformers and I heard this was like a, you know, a cult classic on the original PlayStation. So I also had a PlayStation 2 at the time. So before I uh, got the remake version, I played the uh, Kunora 2 on the PS2 and I really loved that game. Uh, Kunora on the Wii was fine as it is, but they changed a lot of stuff that, well, even though the, the core game is uh, more or less the same, they changed a bit of the story, and, well, it's not that big of a deal unless you grew up on the original game, then maybe uh, I don't blame you for not liking the Wii remake, but uh, this version on the Xbox is closer to the original story and uh, graphics. The uh, re remake, well, originally it's going to be a whole new design until fans complain, and then they went with the Kunora 2 model. Uh, that uh, model looked more like a Sonic character than anything else, but uh, this one's closer to the original PlayStation model. And I gotta say, it looks pretty good. And you can see the little Pac-Man logo on top of the hat. Uh, it's created by uh, Bandai Namco. Uh, well, Namco is specifically the one that created Pac-Man. Uh, but not Miss Pac-Man. Uh, they don't have uh, ownership of her for some reason. I mean, I, I, I know more, yes, of the uh, legality. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. This is about Kunora and how he's not a Sonic character. Dick. That's our dream. Uh, keep that in mind. Mm. Okay, now onto the actual gameplay. Okay, more cutscenes. But, uh, I'll explain the gameplay a little bit. It's uh, pretty much your 2D platformer with uh, 3D elements. As I'll show off later on. Uh, it's pretty much like a, you know, s structure like the original Sonic Genesis game where you got like two acts or visions in this case and then onto a boss battle. I try to record both acts, or I mean visions, at the same uh, video, but probably ain't gonna happen until we get to uh, vision four or five, where the uh, levels become a whole lot longer. But this is pretty much what Kunora does. He can grab enemies and either use them as weapons, you know, like throw it in the background there, or as a double jump. Some enemies give you some limited abilities like like that one right there uh, the rim bullet is it's pretty good for the most part but it can easily uh, mistime your uh, shot so uh, be careful with that let's see the uh, Kunora can really move uh, Kunora's got a good attitude for the most part not the fastest thing in life but he can kind of uh, float like uh, Knuckles, even though Knuckles can glide. Okay, so maybe I should stop comparing him to Sonic games. But sometimes it's uh it's hard not to, especially Kunora too. And sometimes we get little cutscenes here and there uh, with the uh, game models. 
Uh, for those who keep it with my channel or brand new, uh, I did do a retrospective of uh, the first Kanoa and the second one. It's on my channel right now. And, you know, of course, you know, before you do that, you know, continue watching this video and don't forget to, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. I'm only saying that because Last time I heard somebody say hit the like button, that little uh, dumb set thing flashes. So I want to see if uh, that happens in my video. Even though I probably won't see it myself. I think it only works for those who are not subscribed to the channel. I think the first time I saw that was on Doc Simpson's uh, channel. Where uh, Kurt Van Hassen says, uh, Remember to sm smash that like button, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, I saw him talking over the story. Uh, whoop, uh, okay, uh, whoop, he has to go now, his printer needs them. But, you know, if you heard their language, it's a made-up language that uh, I think, believe, I believe uh, it consists of some Japanese. But for the most part, it's a made-up language. Uh, a bit similar to uh, banjo Kazooie games. But uh, pretty much, uh, we're going to see what that crash is. And the uh, diva, uh, the Vs, is pretty important in the game. Well, it, at least uh, plot-wise, uh, the person uh, herself, we don't really get to talk to until near the end of the game. But we do get to see some interesting characters along the way. Uh, yeah, I think there's one of the few 2D platformers uh, that, you know, it's not a Metroidvania that has a bit of backtracking. There's alternate path uh, that you well, you don't have to take, you can skip it, but if you want 100% to get all those, uh, villagers to, uh, those little guys that's just free there, there's six of them. I don't plan on completing, uh, the whole game, but I gotta try to get all the villagers at least. And that's it for Vision 1-1. One one. Again, not a Sonic game. But yeah, it's it's a pretty fun game. Uh, if you like Kirby, it's a easy going game. You know, easy to pick up, difficult to master a bit. Um, I don't know with Konoha, it's actually a pretty easy game. With maybe with the slight exception to the final uh, worlds. Mainly because of the uh, tight platforming, you know, I, I showed it off once we get to that part. But pretty much, uh, we're just going from A to B, trying to collect uh, everything along the way. So we can uh, continue with the story. But yeah, uh, for those who haven't seen the uh, retrospective video of the first Konoha game, I noticed that there's uh, some slight changes in the story, mainly because Hupo in the re remake talk more compared to Kanor, and I thought that was a like a weird decision they made there. But uh, this version is uh, pretty much uh, true to the original PlayStation game, more or less, like at least uh, ninety percent. Uh, at least it gets some water here. Hmm. Yeah, I usually forget about this part where Kunor, uh faces uh, Ford uh, going in uh, pretty much in 3D 
for mommy dear. Like for some reason I always thought that was like uh, the thing that happened in Kunora 2. Uh, the main reason is that uh, Kunora 2 made uh, far better use of, of uh, that uh, mode compared to uh, this game. I just remember uh, this part and I think the uh, other part in World 3. Uh, the one with the uh, with the uh, force and the bombs. Again, uh, you know, we we'll get to that when we get to that. But uh, if you have a pretty Kunor game, well, first of all, I recommend getting this version. You get uh, both uh, Kunor one and two. Uh, too bad it doesn't come with the uh, Game Boy Advance games or the uh, Renaissance game. But it's a pretty good deal. I recommend playing the first game first. Not because of the story, but the second game is so much better that when you go to the first one, you know, it's good. But, you know, once you experience the second game, you feel like uh, there's something missing in the first game that could have been, you know, a bit more better, uh, a bit better. Like that was my first mistake of uh, playing Kunora 2 for the PlayStation 2 first before the uh, re remake. Uh, mainly because uh, you get so much abilities with uh, using different enemies to solve different puzzles. Uh, this is. Uh, Mostly uh, a platforming game, but there is some um, puzzle element. Uh, right now, in the uh, first uh, few levels, it's uh, mainly platforming. There may be a bit of puzzles here and there, but this. Ooh, well, that, <laughs> uh, that was weird. That never happened to me before. Usually, that doesn't happen. You usually, hover up and down, not in the straight line. But the uh, second game has a bit more personal element uh, which makes the game a bit more fun and interesting. Now the Game Boy Advance game that is heavy on the uh, personal element. Yeah, I remember uh, downloading those games on the Nintendo Wii U eShop at, at all places. Uh, hopefully uh, it's going to be on Nintendo Switch Online service pretty soon. I would love to play those games again. I end up uh, selling my Wii U to get a Nintendo Switch. Uh, mainly because, you know, I figured that uh, since uh, most Wii U games are going to get ported to Nintendo Switch, which, you know, I was mostly right, that I might as well just sell those games and get some of those games back in the future. Excuse me, uh, Okay, now this is our main antagonist here, uh, Guardius and his uh, henchman, Joker. <laughs> and his main goal is, well, take over the world and prevent uh, the diva, the beast, from singing, which would, uh, I guess, save the world or protect the world. You may notice there's a uh, fast forward button. Uh, I try not to abuse that too much, but sometimes the uh, cutscenes go on a little bit long, so I may end up uh, pressing it for you know a second just to get things moving along. Man, yeah, I should have brought some more water with me. Uh, the current costume that Kanoa has, it looks alright in this version, you know, the sprite version, but seeing that costume in uh, Kanoa 2 version, you know, the uh, Kanoa 2 model, looks pretty weird. You know, if you ever uh, seen him in that costume in the, uh, the Wii version. 
I don't know, it, it just didn't work too well with that, uh, Kunora model. Alright, so we're getting to our first boss. Gonna try to fast forward here and there. Yeah, it's that's gonna be Joker's gimmick. It's not only to call out monsters, but to announce this weak point. I mean, uh, that was uh, totally unnecessary. Even if it's just uh, mainly uh, displaying how s stupid uh, Joker is. But pretty much just uh, grab these guys and aim for the back. It's a pretty easy boss battle. Yeah, I put this in our normal version. I think uh, there was like another phase where he does like a little earthquake thing. If I'm thinking of the right boss. I'm pretty sure he did, did like an earthquake thing, but he didn't do it in this uh in this battle for some reason. I could have sworn he did that even uh, playing the game on normal difficult, uh, difficulty. So pretty much to send this uh, story up, uh, go to different, uh, I guess, village, and well, right now we're gonna go to the forest. Uh, it, it does have an actual name, but we go to the uh, forest to warn the uh, villagers in that place about uh, Guardius, pretty much. But, uh, you know, you can read it all right here. But yes, I apologize for uh, not putting out videos for a while. Uh, been pretty busy, uh, work related, with a new position and everything. Uh, hopefully I can get more videos out, at least on a summer wiki basis, even if it's just a simple just play video. And that's pretty much it for uh, World 1. Uh, thank you for watching and tune in next time when we go to Vision 2. Uh, this is going to be one of my favorite levels. This is me, Bobby Daddy 3 and I'll catch you guys later.